Hi guys and welcome to my new channel Linked CG. This is my first video tutorial and I want to show you one of my contributions to November from 2019. In this video I'm going to show you how to create an interesting looking metal material fully procedural inside Blender. Let's start by first adding a cube into the scene. Then we go into the modifier panel and choose the bevel modifier. Here you can see all of the settings of this modifier. Set the offset to 1 and you turn the cube into a very low poly sphere. By changing the segments count, we set the resolution of the sphere. We set it to 8, but you can also set it to a higher value if you like. Now we activate the smooth shading and you can see hard edges appearing on the sphere. These appear because of several vertices that share the same location. To fix it, just add the new weld modifier to your object. This modifier merges vertices if they are very close to each other. Next, we can switch to the shading panel to start with the creation of our EV metal shader. First, we change the lighting and background settings in the viewport shading menu. Let's choose a HDRI for the lighting and change the background value to 0 so we don't get distracted by it. Then we can create a new material for our object. Rename it to something like EV metal. And now we can start our work in the shading editor. We will use the principal BSDF as our main shader and since the material should be metal, we can set the metallic value of the shader to a value of 1. Now we add a texture coordinate node to get a coordinate system for the textures which we are going to use. Add a mask wave texture to the editor and connect the object output of the texture coordinate node with the vector input of this texture. Set the mask wave type to multifractal, detail to 7, dimension to 0.2 and lacunarity to 1.7 to get the base texture for the surface imperfections of the metal. We then add a color ramp and connect the Musgrave texture with it. With this color ramp we can specify the bumpy areas of the surface. We now add a bump node and connect the color output of the color ramp with the height input of the bump node. Lower the strength of the bump node to something like 0.25 and connect it with the normal input of the principal shader to get a bumpy metal surface. Next, we add another color ramp to define the roughness of our metal material and connect it with the roughness input of the principal shader. After that, we plug the factor output of the Musgrave texture into the color ramp and change its sliders and color values to get a nice looking metallic surface. With this completed, we can start mixing some colors together for our shader. Add a mix RGB node to the material and connect the color ramp with our surface imperfections mask into the factor input. Now we can set the color for the bumpy area specifically. The first color defines the bumpy areas and the second one the rest of the surface. I choose a red value for the first color and some bluish color for the second one, but you can choose whatever you like. Connect the mix RGB node with the base color input of the principal shader and you have a basic setup for a rusty metal material. Let's continue and divide our surface into different cells for a more interesting look. To achieve this, we add a Voronoi texture to the material and connect the object coordinates to it. We set the texture to smooth F1, set the scale to something like 3 and the smoothness to 0.06. With this setup, we can add another level of bumpiness to the material. We then add another bump node, connect the old one with it via the normal sockets and then plug the color output of the Voronoi texture into the height input of the new bump node. We now can connect the new bump node with the principal shader and you can see different cells appearing on the surface. After that we want to change the color for every cell. For that we just add another color ramp node, connect the color output of the Voronoi texture with it and turn the colored cells into black and white values. Now we add a new mix RGB node, set it to multiply, connect it to the color setup of the material and plug the new color ramp into the second color input of the mix RGB. With a factor, we can now darken the color values we set up before for the different cells we created. I choose a value of 0.7 for it. For this material, I also wanted the boundaries of the cells to be colored. To achieve this, we need to create another mask for the boundaries and mix it with our other mask. 
To create this new mask, we duplicate our Voronoi texture and set it to distance to edge. This texture needs the same coordinate system and scale so that the cells line up with the ones from the Voronoi texture before. For a more interesting look, we want to modify the coordinate system for this texture a little bit to distort these perfect straight boundaries created by the texture. For that, we need another mix RGB node, set to add, and connect it with the coordinate system right before the texture. Next, we add a math node, set it to subtract, and connect the Musgrave texture to it. Set the value to 1 and connect it to the second color input of the mix RGB node. We need to subtract from the Musgrave texture first to offset the values that are added to the object coordinates. Otherwise, the coordinates would be shifted only in one direction and the new Voronoi texture wouldn't line up with the old one anymore. Set the factor of the mix RGB to a very low value, something like 0.01, which is already enough for this material. Next, we add the color wrap to define the boundary mask. As our last step, we add one more mix RGB node, set it to multiply, connect both color masks we created before to it, and set the factor to 1. This mix RGB is our new mix factor for the colors of the material. With this done, our metal material is completed and we can now easily change the different values as we want to get different metallic looks pretty fast. I hope this tutorial helped you in any way. I plan to do more material videos like this one, so tell me what you think in the comments and stay tuned for more videos. Bye!